Germany, which once created many aviation marvels, has generally become only a profitable market or a good partner in this field since 1945. The BO 105 is one of the few exceptions. It ushered in a new age in the light rotorcraft design and became popular globally. Today we're investigating the BO 105, the most successful purely German aerial vehicle after the Second World War. The BO 105 emerged as an ideal light helicopter which combined a rigid non-articulated rotor, twin engines and compact size. These features have set new standards in this field. It is the first rotorcraft that could perform inverted loops. No other purely German aerial vehicle has reached the BO 105's market success. The German engineers had worked on rotorcraft since the late 1920s. Even though the first attempt the Sashka helicopter had failed in 1927. Before and during the Second World War, Germany had developed and produced many successful machines. However, after the defeat in 1945, the Allies dictated many restrictions, including banning Germany's production of aerial vehicles. Nevertheless, due to the descending Iron Curtain across Europe, the US, the UK and France agreed to ease many limitations on Germany in 1955, including rearmament. One year later, Ludwig Belko and Emily Island founded Belko and Mitchkluman and began to work on helicopter design. Due to a decade of restrictions, Germany had fallen far behind its rivals in the market and modern rotorcraft technologies. France had reached a vast market with the turboshaft engine Alouette 2 and Alouette 3. Many countries had the US Bell 47 with a piston engine. However, these helicopters are now far from fulfilling modern combat requirements. The French and Americans began to work on the new Gazelle and Bell 206 to replace their older models. So the late 1950s and early 1960s were the best time to join the game. Belco developed the BO-102 in 1959 and the BO-103, a larger single-seat version of its predecessor, in 1961. Although never reaching the production phase, these two machines played crucial roles in the early development of rigid non-articulated rotor design and composite blades. Like the previous Alouette 2 and 3 and Bell 47, the new Gazelle and Bell 206 had single engine which reduced reliability and payload. Using the experience from the BO2 and BO3, Belco began to work on the BO104 with two 120 horsepower Vankel engines in 1961 as a private venture. The new helicopter was still too small and a Wankel engine was inefficient compared to the new turboshafts. So, Belko switched to the BO-105 project in 1962. The full-scale development phase began in 1964 when the West German government gave 60% of the required capital for the program as a loan, which would be repaid if the helicopter had commercial success. Besides, Belko worked with the suppliers on a risk-sharing basis in the development partnership. The German company had already worked with the French Sud Aviation on a rigid non-articulated rotor with reinforced fiberglass foldable blades which would be used on both the Gazelle and the BO-105. The initial flight tests had been conducted on an Alouette 2. Still, the first BO-105 prototype with two Allison 250C18 turboshaft engines had the Westland Scout's hinged main rotor. It was used for ground tests but was immediately destroyed due to intense ground resonance. The second prototype with a rigid non-articulated rotor made its maiden flight on February 16, 1967. The third prototype was fitted with two manned 2 boost 6022 turboshafts. Yet, after tests, the company decided to continue with the Allison's engine. In 1968, Belko merged with Messerschmitt and one year later, Hamburger Flugzeugbau joined them. They formed a new company called Messerschmitt Belke Bloom, or shortly MBB. The first production variant of the BO-105 made its maiden flight on May 1, 1969. In 1970, the German ADAC Air Rescue and the Bavarian State Police became the first customers of the helicopter. The Netherlands became the first export military operator. 
The first military BO-105 variants were ordered in 1976 by Germany. The BO-105M and BO-105P became operational in 1979 and 1980 respectively. Besides Germany, the helicopter was produced under license in Canada, Indonesia, the Philippines, South Korea and Spain. In the mid-1980s, Chile announced it would license build the BO-105. However, later the negotiations failed. The BO-105 semi-monocoque fuselage is made of aluminum alloys. The cowlings over power plants and other non-load bearing elements are of fiberglass. The cabin has a length of 4.55 meters, a width of 1.4 meters, a height of 1.25 meters and a volume of 4.8 cubic meters. The baggage compartment is located in the cabin's lower rear and is 1.85 meters long, 1.2 meters wide and 0.57 meters high. Its doors open to the sides. With the rear seats removed, two stretchers can be installed in the cabin and baggage compartment. Their floors have seven removable panels, providing access to the fuel tanks and control system wiring. The power panel under the engines is made of titanium alloy. The main rotor has four reinforced fiberglass blades with a titanium alloy anti-erosion pad. The droop snoot blades of the NACA 23012 asymmetrical section have an increased nose curvature. The blade cord is 0.27 meters and the twist is linear minus 8 degrees. The titanium alloy hub only has axial hinges with roller bearings and torsion bars made of steel tape. If one engine fails, the other is switched to emergency mode which allows the BO-105 to return to the airfield. This design increases maneuverability and reliability while offering good flying characteristics. The BO-105, which can perform up to plus 3.5 and minus 1G maneuvers, is the first rotorcraft that could perform inverted loops. It offers a superior takeoff performance, including significant resistance to catastrophic dynamic rollover, combination of lightweight and the twin-engine configuration enables a rapid ascent in a performance takeoff. Military and paramilitary forces of Albania, Bahrain, Chile, Colombia, Honduras, Indonesia, Peru, the Philippines, South Korea, Sudan and Ukraine still operate the BO-105. The BO-105 has a one-person crew and can carry four passengers. It has a length of 11.86 meters, a rotor diameter of 9.84 meters and a height of 3 meters. The helicopter's empty weight is 1,276 kilograms while its maximum takeoff weight is 2,500 kg. Two 420 shaft horsepower Allison 250C20B turboshaft engines provide a top speed of 242 km per hour. Its cruising speed is 204 km per hour. The helicopter's range is 1,112 km. It can climb an altitude of 5,200 meters, in other words, 17,000 feet. The first production version, the BO-105A, was developed for civil use and had two 315 horsepower Allison 250C18 turboshaft engines. It was immediately suppressed by the BO-105C, equipped with two 405 horsepower Allison 250C20s. The BO-105CB has two 425 horsepower Allison 250C20B3 engines. Its Spanish and Swedish military designations were HR-15 and HKP-9B respectively. The BO-105 GSH was the armed Scott version with a 20mm Rhine metal gun under the belly for the Spanish Army. The BO-105 LOH was the observation version for the Spanish Army. The BO-105 CBS has a 25cm stretch fuselage and an extra window. Its higher performance version is the EC Super 5. The BO-105 CBS-5 has an increased lifting capability. The BO-105 KLH is the South Korean license produced combat version of the CBS-5. It has a Korean mission equipment package including communication, navigation, electronic warfare and a target acquisition system. This variant is fitted with an improved rotor blade and a transmission system. Initially, South Korea had planned to acquire 130 helicopters, 
but after 12 units were delivered, the production ceased. The BO105D is the UK certified offshore version. The BO1058GH is the high speed research variant. The BO105LSA1 has a stretch fuselage and two 507 horsepower Allison 250C28C turbine engines. The maximum takeoff weight of the BO105LSA3 and BO105LSA3 superlifter versions increased to 2600 and 2850 kg, respectively. The BO-105M was the military light transport and surveillance model for the West German Army. Its German Army designation is Verbindung Sub Schaba, or shortly VBH, meaning liaison helicopter. The BO-105P, aka PAH-1, was the German anti-tank helicopter model armed with six Oort missiles. PAH is the abbreviation of Panzer Abwehrhubschrauber, meaning anti-tank helicopter. This helicopter had no armor protection against ground fire. The BO-105B BCH was a proposed escort version of the PAH-1 armed with air-to-air -air Stinger missiles. The project was cancelled in 1993. Twelve retired German BO-105Ps were upgraded and overhauled before delivered to Albania. These helicopters are redesignated as the BO-105E4. The Spanish anti-tank version was the BO-105ATH, locally designated as the HA-15. The Swedish anti-tank version carried the TOW missile, whose Swedish designation was RBS-55H instead of the OT. The Swedish armed forces called the helicopter the HKP-9A. The BO-105MSS naval version has a search radar. The Mexican Navy's helicopters were upgraded in 2005 and received forward-looking infrared sensors, a global positioning system, new rotor blades and armament pylons. The BO-105S is the search and rescue version. The BO-105 Ophelia was a modified model to test the mass-mounted side. The Indonesian licensed production version is the NBO-105. Its stretch variant is NBO-105S. The BO-106 had a widened cabin with 7 seats instead of 5 and two 420 horsepower Allison 250 C20B engines. The Philippine PADC Hummingbird was an unlicensed development of the BO-105C. The BO-115 was a light attack helicopter based on the BO-105. Only one mock-up was ever produced. Even though over 40 countries preferred it, the BO-105's military career was quiet. Some sources claim that the helicopter participated in the Indonesian military operations in East Timor and Papua. Nevertheless, even they do not mention any exciting combat stories. The success of the BO-105 came from the market, not the battlefield. No other German aerial vehicle has been able to find customers as this helicopter could since the Second World War. Nearly 1,650 BO-105s were produced. This achievement was no surprise. It was the only rotorcraft with two turboshaft engines in its time, making it more powerful and reliable. Thanks to its revolutionary rigid non-articulated rotor, the BO-105 had much superior maneuverability than any of its rivals in the market. These features have set the new standards for the later light helicopters. The BO-105 was the first pure German aviation marvel created after the Second World War. And it seems to be the last. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares.